Hello folks, hope you're going well, hope your day is going well, hope the start of this new week is going well for you. It is time for some more Hobby Nightmares, and some of these are, shall we say, a bit charged. A bit charged? Yeah, we'll go on that one. We will go on that one. If you like what I do, please subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 15,000 subs at the end of the year. We're trying to get there, we're trying to push our way there. If you can help us get there, that would mean a hell of a lot to me going forward. So, if you like what I do, share my stuff. Maybe give it to somebody you think can get some good stuff out of it and can, you know help them out and yeah hopefully we can all have a good time together and you can help me towards that 15,000 subscriber target towards the end of the year so let's jump in some hobby nightmares shall we warden says hey north i swear this is a hobby related thing it just needs a bit of context also you can call me warden okay cool well to be fair man your your nightmare isn't that long so when does the context stop because Okay, anyway, reading on. I have recently taken time to reflect over my life in the hobby for the past year, and I realised I have a major need for self-improvement mentally and physically. Around September last year, I had to quit my original job as a furniture set a resale store due to a tumour in my right wrist. In the wrist? Wow, that's odd. A tumour in your right wrist. Okay. This led me uh, to going through a cycle of self-hatred, stress, weight gain, and trying to escape my life issues through spending. Even though I have, I have healed, and I know I can push to improve, I have not been able to get back in, uh, to how happy I was before I got the news. Two months later, after healing and therapy, I was no longer able to paint the way I would before. This caused me to sit around getting fat and being sad for myself, in hindsight, this was kind of silly. I could still use the hand, and I'm very thankful for that. But I had a sunk cost at this point. I had, I had the Indomitus box set, the Black Templar box, every kit from that release, and Dark Imperium, at the time, and tried to get back into it. That began an unhealthy obsession with the hobby, as it was the only thing I could cope with, and, and being a good way to get my motor function somewhat back. I now weigh... 275 pounds which is 124 kilos that's that's heavy yeah that's heavy well depending on how tall you are i think if you're like 6'4 275 i mean the, i always remember when i was watching wrestling back in the day the rock was 275 pounds he was billed at being 200 that's not always their weight but he was billed at being 6'5 275 right that was his that was his his weight and height so if you're not 6'4", six, 6'5", six, that is a big dude. You are a big dude. I cannot run. I have an unhealthy need for the hobby. And even though I am finally back to where I was painting-wise, had to use the other hand since my right is a bit shaky, I feel like I am myself. In, uh, I am in a self-imposed hate loop. Is there any way to break through this mental state? My current job is basically standing around not doing anything from 8.45 to 9.15 p.m. 8.45 a.m. to 9.15 p.m. And I feel like it is killing me. I only really come home, take a shower, eat my quick meal, then pass out for 30 minutes of hobby time. When I, what can I do? I feel like I have trapped myself with my spending, my mental pains, my physical degradation, and my use of Warhammer as a crutch. I feel uncertain about my life and if I will ever be able to get healthy. Sorry if I repeated myself. This comes in waves and I just cannot continue living my life stuck working six days a week being sad and isolating myself okay so i don't really know your life man so I, and this is the first advice one i've had in like a month or two so you know uh, complain about it if you like in the comments but i only read what i get in and if and if i get something in that i think might help people then i'm going to read about it uh, the other two today are hobby related and stories though so you can look forward to that this one though um, i don't know your life man i, I really don't so at the end of the day, I can make suggestions, but you might have to fine-tune them yourself. You know, because if, if you if you think that doesn't quite work for me, but I can see how I could make it work for me. You, need, you might need to do that, okay? So I don't know what your financial situation is, or whether you've got somewhere to stay. If you do have somewhere to stay, free of charge right now, okay? Get yourself a part-time job anywhere. Something that you think will be a bit fun. Get yourself a part-time job, and make sure it's part-time. Quit your current job 
I move in with somebody, whether it be a family member or, or anyone like that, or anyone who can give you a break on rent, right? Move in with them if you're single. You haven't told me if you're single or not. That's what I mean. You might have to fine-tune my advice. Move in with them or ask to move in with them, right? Go, go and go somewhere where you can start building up a little nest egg. Build it, take off the financial pressure from yourself. Go and do that. That's exactly what I did when I got back from the US. I, I had a, an opportunity to have a place of my own, um, but I didn't want the strain dealing with that when I've already got a, a kid to take care of and I've got my, my, my family to take care of and I've just, I'm just coming off a very lengthy, I'm going to call it divorce, even though we weren't married. So I'm coming off a very costly, emotionally costly divorce and leaving my, my life behind in the US. I just didn't have the mental bandwidth to go into a, a nine to five cr soul crushing job and have all of the responsibilities of rent and all that hanging over my head. So I moved in with my grandpa, right? I, 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 I did his house up. I, I, I looked after him and I moved in with him and it saved me on rent. You know, it, it, it made sure I could put money away for the future. I could take care of him because he, he took care of me when I was younger. So I gave back to him and it fit, right? So if there is a situation like that in your life where you think you can go and Sit down and, and have some have a nice time with with your family. Go and do that, right? Go and do that. Take off the financial strain of needing that nine that that nearly twelve hour job six days a week. That's not that is not livable. Twelve hours a day, six days a week is not livable, man. Um, you're literally at the moment you're standing in a pit of fire and going, "Wow, this is really hot. I don't want this to be hot." Well, yeah. Well, step up the fire then, and, and take the consequences. If you don't have anywhere to be. And you need to downgrade where you live. You know, take the consequences on the chin. Say, yeah, I don't want to do this 12 hour a week shit. No, 12 hour a day shit. Right? I'm leaving. I'm not doing this anymore. Take the consequences of the action and go and, and go and look for yourself. So number one, take the financial burden off needing to be 12 hours a week. The 12 hours a day, sorry, right? Six days a week. That's what I would do. That's the first thing I would do. After that. Um, get a part-time job before you leave. So get yourself a part-time job, or at least get a part-time job in the offing, like like something like that's, that's that's there that you can go and do. Number two, join a gym. Uh, join a gym and literally start. Or if you don't want to do that, and I'm not not sure everybody wants to do that, start walking. Start walking. Go and buy some gear that you can be comfortable with walking. If you're in a hot climate or cold climate, whatever you need to do, go and buy it. Right? Go and get that stuff sorted out. If you've already got it, which you should do, really, you're an adult, then put it on. Go for some walks. Right? Get some audio books in your ears. Go and read the Night Lords trilogy um, on Audible. Go and get that, or go and get something similar, 40k-ish, and walk around. Use the hobby to work for you. Don't work for the hobby. At the moment, you're working for the hobby. You're replacing your work with the hobby because you need your brain to be, you know, you need your brain to be inside the hobby somewhere. Well, make the hobby work for you. Go out on runs and walks are going to better yourself. And whilst you're doing it, do some hobby. Listen to law. Listen to law podcasts. Listen to audiobooks. Do something that makes you look forward to your time alone. And I swear to God, walking and running... I'm not going to be melodramatic and say it saved my life. It did a lot for me um, and my mental state. I I walked through and ran through a lot of pain, you know? And uh, books by Aaron Dembski-Bowden and, and Guy Haley and all these other guys, they, they did a lot for me as well. And, and some fantasy books too. Um, Joe Abercrombie was one of those, right? There, there, there were books out there that really, on Audible and other, other platforms like that, really got me through when I was walking and running and stuff. Um, so I would recommend you do that, okay? Um, eat better, eat healthier. That's all. That's always a good thing. You know, get cut down on the sugar, cut down on the, on the fatty intakes, um, all the carbs, cut down on all that shit, and you will you will rapidly see the weight start to drop off. If you're that that overweight and you're walking and you're eating healthily, your your weight will drop. It will drop quite substantially. And drink lots of water. That is a big cheat that not a lot of people do. Drink water all the time because if you're drinking fizzy pop and and Pepsi and shit like that, what you what you're not realizing is your body knows that's not water, and so it starts to accumulate water weight. You start to get water weight as soon as you start drinking lots and lots of water every day. Your body gets used to it and it starts to excrete all the waste water that you've got on your body that doesn't need to be there. At the start of your weight loss journey, like what happened with me, you are pissing all the time. You're literally always going to the toilet. Why? Because your body is getting rid of all the water weight. It's realizing I don't need this excess water in case he in case he, he's gonna he's gonna you know die of thirst. 
so I can get rid of it, right? And you you lose, you can lose, you lose a ton of weight straight away by doing that, right? So those are three things to get going, to just to get you started. Later on, you know, once you've got your, your part-time job and things like that, later on, what I would do is uh, put money away. When you're in your part-time job, put money away. Make sure you're, you're getting a little next egg, next egg together. And then figure out what you want to do with your life. You're obviously not in a job that you want to do. What do you want to do with your life? If that need, if you need to go back to university for that, or do you need to go to a, a community college, do you need to do some training, look into it. Every journey starts with that first step. I know it's hard, I know it's difficult, I know it's terrible sometimes to think, oh my god, I'm too old, I can't do this, I can't, yes you can, yes you can, right, the first steps, it is a big cliche but it's true, the first step is always the hardest, I would say the first 10 steps of 100 are the hardest, right, because it's just not not just one step. Sending an email isn't a step, you know. You've got to go and go and go and go. We've got to have that chutzpah for a couple of months. If you don't have that get up and go, you. But to be fair, you can't. In a 12-hour job, six days a week, you can't have that get up and go. It's sucked away from you, right? You, that's the that's the big thing. You need to get out of there. You need to get out of working 12, day, 12 hours a day and uh, six days a week. That needs to go. That needs to go. Because if you're on a job that you love and it's making good, making you good money, feel free. Overwork yourself. I'm not here to talk to you about how you should live your life, right? But if it's not working for you and there's something as obvious as, oh, I'm working a job I hate for 12 hours a day, six days a week, that needs to go away. Even if you need to take, take a step back in your life and move back in with your parents or, or move in with a family member or something like that, even if you need to do that, it's better than what you're doing now. Right? Don't sit in the fire and complain it's hot. Do something about it. Right, I've given you some advice there to, to start you off the foundational stuff, right? And none of that has had to do with the hobby. Apart from listening to your audiobooks. Because the hobby, really, it's something that comes in... It should be the cherry on top of the cake. It shouldn't be the cake. Alright? That's what I mean. Start building the cake. Do some hobby, sure. We'll start doing the cake. Join some hobby groups, because now you've got more time in your part-time work. You can join some hobby groups, and then the hobby, again, is working for you. You're not sitting in a room working on the hobby. The hobby is working for you. You're doing audiobooks when you're walking around. You're losing some weight doing that. You're going and making new friends at your local gaming group. You're making sure that you're playing games of Warhammer to make sure you're getting use out of your models. All of those stuff, the hobby should be working for you and not the other way around, man. All right? All right. Hopefully that's got you on a on a more of an even path. Again, you may need to, to switch it around for your life, okay? But that's what I would do. Also, lastly, use the Discord, man. Use the Discord. It's so good for things like this. There are so many people who can help you out who have been in similar places and similar journeys, right? We've had cancer survivors. We've had, you know, people who've gotten marked depression. We, we've had, we've had, you know, delete yourself survivors. We've had all of those people are all on, on the Discord. Go and ask. Go and ask. And they will give you far more advice than I've given you here. Right? And probably more laser focused into who you are. So, moving on. Matt says. Hi, Exile from the Northern Realm. Firstly, thanks for reading out some of my tales and well done on the channel. Cheers, man. Some stories do fall pretty close to the knuckle with my, expe with my experiences, both inside and outside of the hobby. I just want to share a short story about how helping someone out can have a snowball effect within local gaming communities and beyond. I regularly try to invest in friendly local game stores nearby and within commu commutable distance to my work and home location in the Midlands, with one local experience being rather memorable. After 10th edition dropped, I found myself doing an inventory of my pile of shame, or collection of potential, I tell my wife. <laughs> I say that as well. I say that as well. He's like, we're moving in together. Are you, are you really going to take all this stuff? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Well, there's all, there's lots of toy soldiers in there. Just, where's it all going to go? And I'm like, well, you know, just, it's, it's my, it's my, this is my artistic reverie. This is my artistic muse. I thought I was your muse. You are my muse, my dear. You are, you are the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. But you're not a space marine. And space marines are sexy as fuck. Sorry, are you still here? Sorry, yeah, back to the story, back to the story. Um, realising I had plenty of bigger bugs... Uh, sorry, after 10th edition dropped, I found myself doing an inventory of my pile of shame, blah, blah, blah. Okay, 
and working out what I wanted to do with, with, a, with a new Tyranid High Fleet I had decided to paint. Realising I had plenty of bigger bugs, but not so many little, little ones, I went looking for some old style termagants. I found a pack at a local store about five miles away, so I called the owner, who put a box aside and went to collect them. I went into the shop with the only intention to buy said models. And perhaps, perhaps, a pot of paint. Maybe a new detail brush. My wife was always telling me to treat yourself now and then. Good girl. Anyhow, a fellow hobbyist walked into the store, and I had seen a few times at the local club. So I said hello. After about four minutes of to and fro, he informed me he was there to pick up some termagants. However, here's the rub. There was only one box available, but plenty of other stock. Remembering my collection at home, I said he could have my reserved box for himself, but only if he, if he shared with me his plans for his next high fleet. He was delighted, and said given his low salary, that was all he could afford, and he had a fledgling force on the go. He was struggling with a colour scheme, having no idea about colour theory, having only been in the hobby for about a year. I offered my sage advice, to which he was incredibly grateful. Okay, that's cool. However, there was also a combat patrol box on sale. I did not need the contents of it, but after being inspired by our conversation, he decided to buy said box, a hive tyrant and the termagants. After waiting for his parents to come to the shop, he walked out with said models. The owners of the shop were needless to say delighted with the sale, seeing it had been a slow day and that it went a long way to help them. I was happy with my act of altruism and left the store, without the models, but a spring in my step. Cut to two weeks down the line, I was at the local club, and I saw the guy playing a game against some sisters of battle. His tyranids were completed, High Tyrant Hydra in colour. He had told everybody at the club about our conversation. Turns out he is well known and respected at the club, and recommended me to a lot of his friends, to discuss painting ideas, lore discussions, and also shared about the stories I have had published online. Since then, I have had a number of people approach me online asking for help deciding what to work on. Requests for games in both Games Workshop affiliated games and systems outside the parent company. I have also had communication in relation to having some of my stories published in other ventures. Time will tell if these pan out. Overall, it goes to show how random acts of kindness and being willing to listen can pay off in the most unusual of ways. Keep doing what you do, and all the best luck out there for the future. Kind regards, Matt. So here's the thing. Here's the thing with life, right? You never know how connected people are. You just don't. You, you absolutely never know. Um, some, of the, some of the best business partnerships and situations I've ever been involved in that have been lucrative or, or been really good for me personally have always come, come across from me talking to people and getting along with people and then eventually them going hey north knows how to do that why don't we get him to do that or north can north is good at history why don't we get him to teach that class or you know that kind of a thing always comes from that way networking is essential to modern life if you can't network you're going to struggle you know you're going to struggle and networking can be as simple as doing going to a conference of like-minded people and talking shit just talking shit. Being nice. Going to a conference of like-minded people and being nice. If you're a teacher, go to an educator's conference. If you're... Or, or, or you, maybe narrow it down to like a history teacher's conference. If you're a history guy. You know, there are, there, are lo there are loads out there. You know, programmers do this all of the time. Computer programmers do this constantly. Once every couple of months, they will go to a big meet and greet with other with other people from the same industry. Just to, just to give away their business cards and say, look, I'm... We're getting along quite well. If you want to work on a game together, there's my business card. They always do it. Networking is essential to modern life, bros. I'm telling you now. Absolutely essential. So, get on out there and do it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Matt, by the way, if you if you want me to read any of your any of your work, that'd be pretty cool. I, I, I like that kind of stuff. And, you know. Get involved in bloody... Yeah, get involved in the RPG. We've got a Duskfall RPG that we're making on uh, World Anvil. Get involved in that, Matt. Don't stop, stop messing around. Come and write some lore for us. Anyway. Maximum Madre says... Hey, North. My name is Madre. Uh, but I changed my name. 
and you can feel free to use that in my read. No worries. I am a hobby mother, and I've played Warhammer 40,000 since my brothers brought me into their games at the tender age of 11. Well, we've got a mother here, okay. First time, first time I think we've had a mother on the channel. For a long time when I was a kid, I was secluded to the painting table. My brothers played games against, each against me, but never really with any models that were my own. You see, they did Space Marines, and my parents were kind of clueless when it came to hobby and things like that. So they just bought more Space Marines for the boys, and had no idea that their shy daughter loved her some Space Elves. That sucks, man. Th that's how it used to be, though. That's how it used to be. Girls were into one thing, and boys were into another. And, and parents were kind of blind. Most of them were kind of blind. They were like, well, you're into Barbie and shit. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You're a girl, right? So you're going to do that. Um, problem with the modern world is we've gone so far in the other direction that it's kind of insane. It's like, you know, you know, boys must play with dolls and girls must play with action men. No, dude. Kids play with what they want to play with. Just let them have fun. Fuck's sake. As long as they're playing with plug sockets, let them have fun. You know, just... just... Jesus, you know. Um, yeah, this, this used to be what it was like, though. You would definitely have... Uh, parents who would do this like my, my 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 mother god lover right you know she knew next to nothing about warhammer because she she couldn't there's too many things going on in life um so yeah i i <laughs> sometimes i got the wrong model bought for me but you just smile and go thank you so much you know it's great thank you um anyway moving on that and my degree would later be in art and art would become my career as a kid, I honed these skills, painting the Crimson Fist and Black Templars, I swear everybody did those around 3rd edition, to a level that people at our local games workshop thought they had been commissioned, uh, th that my brothers had commissioned the models to be painted elsewhere. Cool, that's good, that's good. Shows you how uh, the hobby can nurture you, to, nurture you though to be having some really cool skills. I like that, I like that a lot. Alright. When I had kids of my own, and they started to show an interest in my large Eldar force, I nurtured that. I got them law books, magazines, anything that could show them what an amazing hobby this was. Through my own games, they were hooked. But this story is not about them. It's about the store I go to, and how one Games Workshop manager helped save the hobby in my eyes. I'd been going to my local Games Workshop for years, having a really good time under the former manager named Mike. When he left, he was replaced with another manager by the name of Luke, and let me tell you, Luke was an issue. Mainly because he came with a, me with a metric boatload of neckbeard friends who essentially took over the store and ran off anyone who was not in their clique. Now, I have nothing against neck people with neckbeards. I've dated more than a few myself. I only have a problem if you are, in general, a very toxic and nasty person, and these guys definitely fit the bill. They would surround the gaming table with a stench of sweat and musk, farting and cajoling with each other at the top of their lungs about one aspect of law or the other. They were essentially really invested in it, which is fine, and to be honest, they were essentially what meme culture looked like back then without the internet memes to drive it on. Today, memes are mostly online, of course. These guys were, were walking meme senders and memes themselves. Okay. I get what you're saying there, is that today the kind of people who, who send loads of 40k memes are the kind of people who would stand around in the store going, blah, 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 you know, just shouting at the top of their lungs about any aspect of the law that they found interesting that nobody else did, right? Yeah, yeah. Fail but on the, fail but on the useless, no. Yeah, shit like that, yeah? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, you get them all the time. You get them, you still get them now. You still get them now. He will, he will start talking to you about termies. You're like, oh, fuck off, mate. <sighs> oh, well, you know, we burn Prospero, though. I don't care about your stupid fucking law, man. Just back up, back away. Back away. Just go over there somewhere, right? I've got no problem with you being invested in your law at all. You go, go for it, man. And if, if I'm like, if we're having a law discussion, that'd be pretty cool, right? But I don't want law di dictated to me with a fat wagging finger. Do you know what I mean? And that's what that's what tends to degrade to with these people a lot of the time. They they wave their finger in your face. Well, I think you'll find that you know, yeah, uh, uh, you know, and you're like, yeah, Jesus Christ. 
leave me alone, dude. Right? I, I want to have an, an adult conversation about this, this toy soldier, right? And that sounds like a misnomer, but you know what I mean. You can sit there and have quite an adult conversation about the themes and the lore and what your army does and, and, and how you want to paint it and go about it and that, th that kind of thing. There's loads of ways to do it without being obnoxious and really annoying. But anyway. Carrying on. If you were caught at the gaming table whilst they were there, they would surround you and critique, quote-unquote, your game. Giving you hints and tips that you had not asked for and berating you for not playing the game correctly, quote-unquote, especially if you were playing Space Wolves or Tau, the two factions that were mostly played by the group. Their leader, let's call him Wolf Lord Jim. <laughs> I just thought of Earthworm Jim, Wolf Lord Jim. Let's call him Wolf Lord Jim, was an obnoxious cur who ran off my son from the store when he went in there with his space wolf force consisting of mainly Wolfen, led by Ragnar Blackmane. Now I know this is not strictly true in the lore, but hey, they're just playing a game, right? Ha. Huh. Jim spat his dummy out and was practically foaming at the mouth in my son's face about how his army was not law accurate and shouldn't be played at an official Games Workshop store. When my son and his friends came home and told me, I went down to the store and told Jim where he could stick his wolf pelts from now on. <laughs> when I brought this up with Luke, the manager, he simply told me it came with the territory as it was a hobby and people were passionate about it. But if my son wanted to come back, he would play games with him himself. A nice gesture, I guess, but his attitude just rubbed me the wrong way. So I had my sons set up a hobby sh hobby club at their local school, sorry, at their school instead of their hobby, uh, and their hobby burgeoned. Burgeoned means it got bigger, by the way, if you don't know what that means. So I had my sons set up a hobby club at their school instead, and their and their hobby soon burgeoned. The cool thing. I called Games Workshop to see if there were any school groups, and they said that there were, but none that were at my son's school. I offered to set one up, and they sent a load of free stock to the school, and it took off. This is not, however, where the story ends, unfortunately. Okay, so that's a good thing that Games Workshop do do, and they still do as far as I'm aware. Uh, their school team, their school reach out team is phenomenal. Mostly old girls, mostly old ladies. Like you'll call them up, you'll call up Games Workshop, and, and you'll say what you what you want to call for. You will go straight through to the ladies, and they'll say, "Hello, you know, uh, 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 what, what school do you go? What school does your? Do you want to set up a club in?" And they will look at it and see if it's already got one. If it does, then they'll tell you it's already got one, and they'll send a few complimentary sets to the to the the club for a new member, right? Because they want new people in the hobby. It is a ground, it's a grassroots initiative, right? If you go to a local uh, a school club for Warhammer. And you call up Games Workshop saying you're new. They will send you free shit to your club. Just for you. They may even put your name on it. Just as a welcome to the hobby gift, right? Because they're very, very into getting younger people into the hobby. And good for them. That's exactly what they should be doing. It's the kind of thing they should be doing. Um, but, but a lot of the stories, a lot of the, the anecdotes I hear are of things like that. I get loads of those every month. People saying, oh my god, my son got loads of free stuff. Yeah, they do do that, right? They do that. Because the, the models mean nothing to them. People being in the hobby and, set and buying those models for their entire life from now on, <clears throat> that means a lot. That means a lot, right? But this is really cool. I love that. I love that this has happened. A few years pass, and I lapse away from the store. The stories I hear from there are that the group of neckbeards have chased off all the other custom, and it was only because sales finally started to tank that Games Workshop Corporate began listening to the complaints and fired the manager after several warnings. Yeah. That is a shame. But that is when Games Workshop are going to start doing stuff to your store. If you don't like your manager, or your manager spoiling your store, the only thing you can do to combat it is to make sure you don't buy any stock at that store. That's it. That is it, folks. That is the only recourse you've got. They brought in another guy who had been running a game store in capital letters game, a video store, a video, a video game retailer here in the UK. And so he was used to dealing with issue customers from the geeky side of defense. 
I went along to the first two few weeks under his management and saw immediately that things were going to be different. Rather than single out the neckbeards, he, star he instead doubled the gaming space in the store and asked for a single booking per table per person per day. Now, if the table was free and not booked for use, you could still just jump on, but games, but booked games would always be given precedence, even if a non-booked game was, was only halfway through. This will be important later. That's a really good system, because you're not taking stuff away, right? What this, what this Games Workshop guy has done, he's gone in, and to get the gamers of the store on side, he could have very easily have alienated people just in an effort to get rid of these neckbeards. He could have said, you now have to book for all your tables. You've only got one gaming table, you've now got a book to be on it, right? And only one person can book from a group per day. That would, that would turn a lot of people off. But instead, he's doubled the gaming space, which is a big plus from the gamers in your store. And he said, listen, uh, I want this to be a bit more organised, so you need to call up and book. Now, those games will take precedence from everybody else who comes in. Those games will happen first, no matter what. You will get your time. Even if people are gaming at the time, you will get your time. Brilliant stuff, right? Good stuff. This change was made to break up the neckbeard monopoly on gaming in the store, but the Cretans just adapted, as most filth do. They would book their games one at a time, all day, every day. Since there were seven of them in the group, they would book all of the slots every day they were in the store on each of the tables. When one of them was in the store, they would hop on the tables for a game where they, they would stomp a beginner into dust and mock them before moving on with their day. They never once challenged anybody in the store who was any good at the game. Most veterans came in once a week on Veterans Night on Thursdays and were happy to give the neckbeards a wide berth because they didn't like them. When one did play a neckbeard, they, tend they tended to do it only once and never again. Invariably, the veteran would win the game, would be called a filthy cheater to the point that of the neckbeard shaking with fury, the veteran would pack up their models whilst chuckling and shaking their head and go back to their business. They were a cancer at the heart of the store, and the new manager, Reese, had finally seen enough. Okay, so, that's unfortunate. Yeah, they've gotten around this system by just booking out his system. They, they were, you know there's a WhatsApp group, or a, or, a, or a Facebook group, or whatever, where they're all crowing, going, Meh! You know, like, like we've gone around the system. Because <laughs> it's their little, their little social club, and no one else, no one else is allowed to play there. The, the critiquing of people's games, that's what really irks me. When pe other people are playing in the store, they 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 passive they passive aggressively bully them by standing around them and critiquing their games in a really you know shaking wagging their finger at you sort of way. I hate that. I I've, I've seen it happen before. It's happened to me before, where where you, where you have to say, listen guys, do you mind backing away from the game so I can I can't even get around the table, right? Do you mind backing away from the game? This is no longer fun. I didn't want an audience. I'm just here to play a game with my friend. I'm not here for an audience, okay? Just keeps back away. You know? And if they won't take that, go to the manager. If they won't accept that, go to the manager and say, listen, they're crowding the game. I can't play. Can you get rid of them, please? And they will. They will. They'll tell them to, they'll tell them to piss off. Anyway. It turns out years later that Reese had a long list of things he'd noticed and had been bringing up to Games Workshop HQ for a while on this group. He'd even profiled them and their behaviours in a little black book as evidence for his eventual banning of the group when he had to justify it to HQ. He'd noticed things that what we all had become de de desensitised to. So he'd noticed things that you'd all become desensitised to. Namely, that this group would hang around beginners for a reason. Most beginners were younger in age. Oh, this is going to take a turn. This is going to take a turn. Oh, no. So now comes the boiling point. A young girl, who I will not name, she was 14 at the time, comes in and is looking for a game. Alright. She had just moved to the area and wants to get in on the ground floor with the hobby. I'm painting away and invite her to come over to talk shop. She immediately opens up, seeing another girl there is painting away and having fun. Then Wolf Lord Jim approaches, adjusts his pants and says, Oh, God. And says, 
I hear you need a game. I'm available. He looks her up and down, and my skin crawls. She shrugs, oblivious, and tells him sure, and goes to get her army and set up at the table. The not booked table. Remember this as it comes up later on. Their game gets underway, but that is not really the story here. Her dark Eldar are nicely painted though. She runs rings around this guy, and he is obviously trying to hold his temper in a cool place, as his space wolves are ripped, up, are ripped to pieces by these girly dark Eldar. When she leans over the table to get some dice, he holds his hands up and says, Whoa there, you will poke my eye out with those things. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, as somebody with a daughter, this is not an easy read. I am shaking my head and looking to the manager who is buried under a load of work, talking to three normal customers at once and doing a pretty good job at selling them some boxes from what I remember. This behaviour by Jim goes on and on, comment after comment. When eventually the girl heads uh, heads to her her bag, her backpack, sorry, and gets a corn hoodie out and throws it on because she says it's cold in there. It's July. <laughs> oh my god. It's July. We don't have any AC. She's not cold. Yeah, she's covering herself up, man. She's covering herself up. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's a fucking disgrace, that. Ugh. Jesus. Oh, moving on. So, she says that she's cold. She's not cold, though. Ooh, I can tell. Jim smirks, winking at her. Ah, uh, no, mate, no. Whoever's around this guy, why is he still in the fucking store? Why is he still... Uh... A reminder here that Jim is in his mid-30s, from, from what I make out. I see Reese walk straight over to the gaming table. Hooray! Thank God. Thank God. Reese walks straight over to the gaming table. Right, he says. I'm afraid this table is booked, guys. He is cut off by Jim. Oh, for fuck's sake. Not with this booking nonsense again. We are finishing this game. We are on turn five anyway, and I'm about to pull this back. Don't cramp my style, man. Don't cramp your style. Fucking hell. With a 14-year-old, dude. Don't cramp my style, man. Fucking dickhead. Jim foams. There is a vein bulging at Reese's temple. <laughs> now, I'm actually friends with Reese to this day, and he still runs that Games Workshop store. I asked him to write out what he said from memory down for me. He told me to tell you that he's done his best to not make himself look like a hero or anything good here, and that he did what any manager worth his salt would have done. But anyway, and I quote, here's what Reese said to him. Uh, you didn't let me finish, dude, he said. This table is booked, and quite frankly, I'm really disturbed by some of the comments you've made to a young girl who is not of age. I know this because her mother is due in here to pick her up in an hour or so. I would like you to pack up your shit throw it into the nearest shoe box or whatever nonsense you are carrying, your, are carrying around your models in this week and get the fuck out of my store. Do not come back and tell your sweat-laden friends to find somewhere else to bother miners from now on too, please. Do you understand? Fucking hell. Unquote. That is a... I really hope that's, that's, that's a true thing that you said because that is fucking... That is a takedown. Do not come back and tell your... <laughs> Do you not come back and tell your sweat-laden friends <laughs> to find somewhere else to bother miners from now on, too? Do you understand? My God. Jim balks and goes white. I bet he's going to, like, scream at him or something. Incredibly, there is no outburst. Okay. He packs up his models in a hurry and walks from the store, followed all the way by Reese, who is treating him like he is some sort of wanted criminal who cannot be let out of his sight. Afterwards, he heads back over to check on the girl and tells her, and I'll get to that in a minute, um, this guy's been caught, dude. This guy is a fucking predator. He's been caught. Because he hasn't argued the toss. 
a lot of you will know the Dave story that I, I, I had from ages ago that, that I, I said from my own time at Games Workshop, right? You, you'll remember that one. It's from way back in the day. I'm talking two years ago now. Very similar, right? That, that, that guy didn't put up a fight when he, was, when he was confronted. He did not put up a fight. He knew what he'd done. He knew what he'd done, right? He's almost relieved to be caught. This guy's not relieved to be caught, but he knows he's been caught. So he's left, right? What Reese has done there, he's cut through to the, the core fibre of his being. And he's been like, I know what you are. I know who you are. You're a scumbag. Get out of my, get out of my store. And instead of arguing the toss, because he knows the evidence is all against him, instead of arguing the toss, he leaves. He gets the hell out of Dodge. Fuck, man. Afterwards, Reese heads back over to the girl and tells her, Listen, um, I'm so sorry. This is not your fault. This has been coming. Uh, this has been coming for a while, and has nothing to do with you. That guy was not a representation of my store. He points directly at me and says, "She is, though. There is no game booked on this table. So if you want to play a small game against some Eldar, I'm sure Madre would oblige. I would, and I did. We had fun, and her mum ended up coming in and helping me move some of my models during the game. They both became future fixtures of the store long term." This remains the most hobby-proud moment I've ever had in my 25-plus years, God, I'm old, in the hobby. Nothing else has happened like this before or after in, in my time around me. I think we all have one of these stories if we've been here for long enough. I, I hope you mean, like, extreme stories and not, like, stories about, you know, pests of this kind. One or two of the neckbeards would venture in for paints and stuff, but all of their game requests were rejected by Aris, and when they called head office to complain, apparently they were told the exact reason for their rejection. None of them came back after that. Games Workshop do a lot of things wrong in my estimation. The reason I watch this channel is for catharsis, as sometimes they really do need a telling off. The thing is, they also do a lot of good. A tremendous amount of good. And there are people uh, there are people there who absolutely love this hobby and want everybody in it to succeed in it. Reese is one of those. If you recognise this tale, then he is likely your local manager as it has gone around the block hundreds of times in my local area. Go give him some love. Love your long time, Madre. Okay. So, like, that is... <laughs> that is that is a, a one stage an epic takedown and an epic, like, get out of my store moment. Uh, it's not the only one I've heard of, though. I've heard a lot of things very similar like this that have happened. Um, again, you know, I wish it didn't happen in our hobby. It does. It just does. It's unfortunate, but it does. And I can't wait to, to, for the day when it probably will never come, when there will be nobody like this in any sort of geeky hobby anywhere ever. But we are, we are nerds. And because we are nerds, we proudly take in broken people. That's what we do. We're nerds. We absolutely proudly, with with every ounce of fibre of our being, we, we welcome in the broken, the lost, the people who don't have anywhere else to go. And we did that for decades. Now, now it's getting more mainstream. And so having an argument like, hey, you know, some of these neckbeard people act this way, having an argument like that can come across as geek-hating because the, because the hobby is more mainstream now, right? Um, the fact of the matter is, back in the day, when we would help out all of the lost souls out there, there inevitably will be a few bad eggs who, who who pass the radar test, right? And they get in, and they poison our hobby with degenerate things like this. What we need to do is find them, get them out, get them gone. See you later. Absolutely. Off you go. Because at the end of the day, this is our hobby, and we are proud to make sure... That we are a place that nerds and people who quite who maybe don't fit anywhere else or maybe just need some friends can come and hang out and talk about toy soldiers and the really cool lore that Games Workshop have made to go along with it. That's what we're here for, right? That's what we're here to do. What we're not here to do is to pander to any sort of depraved lunacy that these that, that some people may be bringing into our into our hobby, whether that be from a furry perspective or anywhere else. Because it all leads into some effed up shit that we don't want. We don't want here, right? Take that shit and go elsewhere, please. Go play some Pathfinder. They'd love to have you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, I'm kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. 
Not Pathfinder, D&D. &D. Let's I say D&D. &D. They'd love to have you. I want to play as a fox. Go on, then. Off you go. And I love you a long time. I'll speak to you soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye now.